Lake Division needs a refresh and long ago were the days of Ronda Rousey and Amanda Nunes just completely reigning over this division. Well, for Amanda Nunes she is, but the point is we need some new fresh talent. And coming up this weekend, we have Hong Kong's Rona Pasquale looking to win that first time in the UFC's octagon. 0-2 so far to start her UFC career. This is her fourth fight in 2022. She's going to be taking on the debuting Brazilian fighter that is Tamiris Vidal. The nickname is Tratora. And we've had a lot of Tratores, but not a lot of Tratoras. Not. Chief among them, probably Michelle Prezeris. And I don't know what that guy's on, but for Tamiris Vidal. Hopefully she's not on that special sauce. But when it does come down to this matchup, Matt, we look at the division, we consider the fighters that are ranked at Bantamweight. There's only about eight, if you go into the UFC fan rankings, that are outside of those 15. So if you win here, maybe another win, you have a number next to your name. So a good opportunity for both of these women coming into this matchup. And if I may, it is kind of odd, isn't it? The Bantamweight division is the oldest women's division, so you would kind of expect that to be the deepest and the most exciting. But right now when you look at all the women's divisions i would almost argue the opposite no, like featherweight's right now, the worst man oh well okay but featherweight has there's more people in this room right now than there are in the featherweight division but you would agree with me though it is kind of wild like flyweight yes the champion's very dominant but there's a lot of great fighters in that division strawweight right now i would argue the top six feel like they're elite and that they're all very competitive the bantamweight division just for being around as long as it has been like you mentioned since ron de Rossi came over from strike force it is kind of wild that it has kind of stalled out in the past few years well you do consider this fight and i mean it is a weird one so if we do consider it for tamiris vidal she comes out of team brother Nitroy. And I mean, listen, you can see her from the picture. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Brown Belt. She's competed in many, many tournaments. It is her specialty. And if you go down, you look at her overall career arc. That is for Vidal. She's fought a varying level of competition. I think that's a decent way to put it. There definitely are names that you do recognize. I mean, she was 1 0 taking on 9 and 3 Carol Hosa, who is ranked in this division at number 9 Pretty right now. Fight. In the UFC, she loses that fight by submission. That was the main event of MMA Brutus number one in 2019. So Vidal continues throughout her career. And did I recognize Vidal from that fight? No, I didn't. I thought, geez, I feel like I know this name. I feel like I watched her fight and watching tape here in the last couple of months. That's because a couple of fights ago, you had Tamaris Vidal taking on Eileen Perez at Samurai Fight House number two. And I showed you a picture of that fight on the screen when we were breaking down Perez versus Egger. Because they fought on, like, the gym mats that I have in my basement. And in that fight, Perez beat her pillar to post. And then she landed a couple of illegal knees in the third round and lost because of those illegal knees. So, out of that, Vidal becomes a Samurai Fight House Bantamweight champ. She takes on uh, Kalia Braga over with LFA. I thought it was Quilia the way it was spelt. They pronounced it a completely different way. But in that matchup, it was the boxing of Braga, who actually has a true pro boxing fight coming up in the near future. The boxing of Braga, some of the kicks to Vidal, who obviously has the jiu-jitsu, and you know her for that. She won that fight exactly. by heel hook. But if you do watch the nuts and bolts game of Tamaris Vidal, I know the record's decent. She also has a win over Martina Jandrova, who's somebody who fought Kayla Harrison. Main event at a PFL playoff card in 2022 did Martina Jandrova as a plus 1,500 underdog. Not and a great look. I, I'm going to let you guess. Did she beat Kayla Harrison? The answer is no. Vidal looked halfway decent in that fight, but my point is... Vidal 6-1, Pasquale 6-4. I'm surprised Vidal's in the UFC right now because her game is incredibly basic at this point. But, and hopefully you will be, or hopefully you will agree with me when I do say this, I did expect more out of Ramona Pasquale when she came into the UFC, and I don't want that to completely cloud my judgment because when you watched her outside, she seemed to have a lot more power. There was a lot more, I guess, just aggression behind her style, if that's fair. Well, there's two parts to it, too. So if we kind of sway away from Vidal for a second and talk about Pasquale, you look at her win over Shamir Pashewa that she had with Invicta. That was a fight that came in on incredibly short notice. Pasquale was due uh, Courtney King and on, what, less than a week's notice. Pashewa steps in, catchweight 150, and that's the other thing about Ramona Pasquale. This is her first fight at Bantamweight in a number of years. And she's not young in her career by any means. No, she isn't. And originally her fight against Josie Annie Nunes, or Josie Annie Nunes, that one was at 145 pounds. The fight that she had against Jocelyn Edwards was supposed to be at 135, and then it seemed like out of the Edwards camp, they wanted it at 45 and ended up at 45. And if you do consider, you talk about the aggression that Pasquale had. She's 6-1 and one in Muay Thai. 
Pi, you know, transitioning into MMA. She was part of the UFC Pi in Great Shanghai. Names. She had a lot of really good fights and also was a member of the Hong Kong Women's uh, National Rugby Team. But if you look at it, the tie clinch and the knees are the biggest part of her game. You saw that in her fight against Jocelyn Edwards her last time out. Seemed like she was going to finish her in the first round, and, and then the air kind of got let out of the tires round two rounds. And that's the weird thing about this fight. I think the clinch is where Pasquale can have a lot of success with her own offense, especially with her striking, like you had mentioned. Her knees are devastating in that clinch, going to either the head or the body. She does have a very strong clinch. She is a very physically strong fighter, and I am very curious to see what she looks like on the scales on Friday, because like we had said, her first time down at 135, not a young fighter by any means in her career. I think she's 34, so again, not the oldest fighter, but still, it's just surprising age to decide to move down but like we kind of joked about in the opening there's not a lot going on at 145 right now so your opportunities are somewhat limited so maybe if Pasquale is able to move down to 135 look very physically strong and really implement some of the offense we were able to see before she came over to the UFC I could see her having a lot of success but my issue is especially with her game plan if she does try to go for the clinch a lot in this fight against Vidal is that not going to invite the takedown is that but not just going to make her job that much it easier because I think if Pasquale is on her back, we all know who has the advantage in an opportunity like that. I just, I think for Pasquale, she definitely has an area that she can have a ton of success in. I just worry that that one area also puts her in a lot of danger. And, and both of these women could kind of quote unquote weight bully a lot of the fighters in this division. If you do consider it for the fighter in Vidal, she's 4 0 at featherweight in her career. She's 2 and 1 at bantamweight. And even one of those wins, the one over Eileen Perez, that one was by a disqualification. She was handily losing exactly. that fight. If you go and watch it, if you look at it for Ramona Pasquale, she's had five fights at featherweight. She's two and three. She's had two catchweight. She's two and one. And she's two and oh at bantamweight. But the competition she had faced at bantamweight in her career, one was a debuting fighter and one was four and five. So neither one of these women out of their wins other than Vidal beating Martina Jandrova and, and having that win over, of course, Eileen Perez by disqualification, has fought the highest level of competition. But for Tamaris Vidal, what I've seen out of her with her takedown attempts, especially in her last fight where she gets the heel hook, her opponent goes for a judo throw in one of the opportunities. And then out of that, Vidal just kind of pushes her way into a takedown. The second time, it's more or less the same thing. So it's out of her opponent's mistakes where Vidal is able to get the takedowns. There's other fights, the Jandrova fight, Chief among them where uh Jindrova's taking her down she, and then yeah. for large portions of the fight Vidal's just pressing the action up against the fence where a lot of UFC referees might be giving them the old action I need to see some action so Vidal I'm not overly impressed with her and the reason being is when she's standing up she kind of stands like an old-timey boxer she's a little bit squared up and all she has is a clubbing right hand. There's a lot behind it, to she, be fair. She throws a big time overhand right for Ramona Pasquale. She will mix it up a little bit. She will throw some more kicks, but by and large for Pasquale, her volume numbers have been very low in the UFC. And if you just look at it from a numeric perspective on UFC stats, 3.83 strikes landed per minute to 8.73 absorb. Great. The Edwards fight, round two, round three. Nunez was dropping her six ways to Sunday. It's, like, it's not like Pasquale. Squall's fought like a crazy high level of competition in the UFC either. I do feel like that has to be said. It's not like this is a fighter who came in on short notice to fight like Valentina Shevchenko. Kind of like Priscilla Cachoeira because I feel like for Priscilla, again she's not the greatest fighter in the world by any means, but like by this point she's kind of got her respect. A good power puncher. She's not some scrub in the UFC, but if you just look at her raw numbers, they are heavily skewed because of that one performance, but in her defense she fought the greatest uh, women's fighter arguably of all time. For Pasquale that's not the case. It's not like she came in and started fighting ranked fighters immediately. So that's what does trouble me because I did think she was going to be a fighter who'd come in, really implement her Muay Thai and have a lot of success from the get-go. And I don't know if I'm just so down on her right now. That's why I kind of agree with where the odds are or if I should just give my head a shake and just say, hey, Pasquale's fought the higher level of competition. She's not going to have those octagon jitters because she has been there at least. And that's the one thing you can point to. Some fighters do get nervous in their UFC debut. I'm not saying it's everybody, but it definitely does happen. So... I just think this is a really difficult fight to predict because A, both fighters have obvious ways where they're going to have a lot of success, and B, I was left wanting a lot more from Pasquale, so I don't really know where I rate her right now in her career. And we'll see how it goes. Eight days notice for Pasquale taking on Josiane Nunes, and in an interview that she had done with the All-Star MMA and JHK, friend of the show, the headline was, Ramona Pasquale reveals lessons learned in Singapore, prepared to point fight if needed. That's exactly what I love to read. The odds in this matchup, Pasquale opened the 
underdog plus 200 she's a plus 130 right now vidal open minus 235 minus 160 we have a look at the top all you votes matt Surprise us, they are to you. It's a, it's a tough fight to try and go with. I'm going to say over under 70% Vidal. I'll say under. You're going to say under. It's over. 542 total votes. 85% Vidal. 77% by decision for the 15% that have Pasquale. 74% by decision. I have no idea who's going to win this fight. Thank you so much. In their next fight, they're not going to fight anybody with a number next to their name. So that leaves you a pool Thank of you, Craig. six other fighters. Chelsea Chandler is probably the next opponent for the winner of this matchup. But if I'm trying to make a pick here, both like the clinch. Vidal for the takedown. Pasquale for her own shots and her knees. I have a hard time. I really do. I... I'd like to say Pasquale because the takedown defense, the level of training partner she has at Syndicate MMA, and the limited striking I've seen from Vidal. But if Vidal is able to hold it up against the cage for long periods of time, cage control wins fights for some people. So there's an opportunity for Vidal there as well. Remember when Jelton Almeida came to the UFC and how excited we both were for his debut? There were obvious skills, obvious areas where he excelled at, and obviously he had a very high ceiling as well. We don't really have that same excitement for Vidal. And I think that is fair because, again, it's a fighter who is a very good grappler. She is good off her back, too. I think she will be active if the fight does end up going where Pasquale initiates the takedown. Because I could see maybe Pasquale not going for traditional takedowns as such. But you get the idea. There is going to be a good amount of clinch in this fight. There's going to be a scramble. At some point, one fighter is going to end up on top. One's going to end up on the bottom. If Vidal ends up on top, then okay, maybe there is the opportunity for her to secure a submission. But I do think that even if Pasquale ends up on top. I think Vidal is active enough on bottom to at least threaten to get back up to her feet, and that's what I do like. So I do agree with me. I would like to pick Pasquale, because I do think she's steadier on the feet, even though, again, you point out some of her volume numbers, and they are not good whatsoever, but I will pick the UFC uh, debut taunt in Vidal. I do like her grappling a little bit more, and I do, again, think if Pasquale is going to have a lot of success, it will be very clinch heavy, and I think that if it does end up in the clinch, it at least gives Vidal the opportunity to get some of those trip takes. The longest, most in-depth video you're going to watch I'm so this sorry, week guys. On Tamiris Vidal taking on Ramona Pasquale. It rhymes. I'm going with Hong Kong's Pasquale, Matt going with Brazil's Vidal. We have some big time fights on this card, including Magni versus Rodriguez and Rodriguez versus Lamos up at the top. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's, let's get, get into, into it. it.